<laughs> in this video, we're going to be talking about when a day in the Maya calendar really begins and also some basic conceptualization to help understand this concept even further. Hachayo no hao, hello everyone and welcome back to the Maya Day Keeper. In this video, I'm going to be talking about some basic and fundamental concepts about the Maya calendar to help you having a better experience in following the Tresenas. In my first fundamental video, I spoke briefly about what Nawals are and how the Tresenas work. If you missed my first fundamental video, you can click here to watch it because you make it easier for you to understand this one. Well, here in modern cities, we are used to the concept of the midnight system. So every time the clock hits midnight, we already start counting the next day. But in the Maya calendar, it doesn't work like that. Instead, we use the fade in and the fade out. After the sun hits the zenith, it starts slowly fading away. So it's a soft transition between the nows, between the days of the Maya calendar. As a general rule, we can say that the days start shifting after the sunset. When the sun goes down the horizon, the current now fades out and the other one starts waking up. We can say that as a general rule, but in reality, it doesn't work quite like that. There are some nows that can arrive earlier than the sunset, and there are some other nows that can leave way after the sunset. And today I'm going to be breaking down to explain how this actually works. In the first video, I spoke about that the Maya calendar is a system of counting of light and darkness, where darkness represents the feminine realm and the light represents the masculine realm. But again, I'm not talking about gender. When we apply this conceptualization following the Kichi Maya language, it's not actually explained like that, applying feminine and masculine. They have a word called ishot kill that can represent what is open, what is developing, what is receptive, what is cold. Then in here for the explanations we can refer to as a feminine realm, just like pregnancy. In the word achahil to explain what is inviting, what is dispersing, what is hot, what is straightforward. And that we can call as the masculine realm. So the nouns of the Maya calendar, they are also conceptualized as Ichohil and Achahil. So in other words, we have masculine and feminine nouns. But for nouns, we can even extend a little bit these conceptualizations and add an aggressive feminine and a masculine passive. Masculine nouns, they are more dominant than the feminines. So for us to really understand when a day in the Maya calendar really begins, we need to understand this concept of the dominance between the nouns. If we have a double feminine nouns, for example, now kebti to dog, the following nouns will be oshibat, three hollower monkey, which is double masculine. So in this case, this double masculine is more dominant than the double feminine. So the nouns will likely rush its arrival. In the same way, if the following now is also a double feminine or is just a less dominant now, you can see this double masculine now leaving later, after the sunset. And for us to understand that, we need to understand what are these basic classifications of every single now. Starting with the numeral nows. Now whom, the now number one, which is the spring, the water that softly breaks the skin of the earth looking for a path. It's an achahil, a masculine nao, but it's a masculine passive nao. That is why number one days are forward and soft at the same time, so they are not very present. But still, it's a forward nao, that's why it's a masculine nao. The nao kib, nao number two, which is the nao of the retraction, of taking one step back to calculate. This one is a ichahil. A feminine owl, it's retracted, it's calculated, it's going to develop a little bit more, so it enters to this feminine realm. Then we move forward to Oshib, now number three, the water opening the path, maybe entering into divergence. It's a very forward owl, so it's a Achahil, a masculine owl. Then we go to Kahib, now number four, which is the water that stops, that is stagnant, or that is slowly getting strength. It's a feminine owl. Then we go to Hob, now number five, 
which is the water with no containment, the water that breaks the dam, that overflows. This one is a Chohinel Achahil, a masculine aggressive Nahuatl. That's why every time when I'm analyzing the Tresenas, I say that the five days is where the things can go sideways because it's a very powerful Nahuatl. Sometimes it can even be stronger than a Nahuatl 13, for example, depending in what now is accompanying the now number five. Then moving, we have now Wakib, now number six. There we talk about pondering, putting things into perspective. Is the heart of the Tresena, is a Ichokil, a feminine now. Then you have now Wukub, now number seven, which is the explosion, the lava, is the climax of the Tresena. We talk about an Achahil now masculine owl. Then we have now Washakib, now number eight, which is a masculine owl. Is the return, is the water repeating the pattern, but it's stronger, you're more prepared. It's a Nachahil, another masculine owl. Then you have Belaer, now number nine, which is the cold, what is hidden from side, the underground waters, what is gestating. It's a feminine owl. The now Laur, now number 10, which is the convergence, is another feminine owl. Then we have Hulaur. Hulaur can be either masculine and feminine. It will mirror the now that is accompanying. For example, if the nominal now is a masculine, now Hulaur, now 11, will be masculine as well. If the nominal now is feminine, then Hulaur will be a feminine now. Then we have Kablaur, now number 12, which is the hidden balance, it's the extra, it's the unexpected. We talk about an Achahil, a masculine owl. And then we have Oshlahu, the now number 13. We talk about the ocean, the volcanoes, like the biggest, the oldest. This one is also an Achahil, a masculine owl. So this way you can understand this flow of the numbers of the Tresenas. And that could be something that we look up first. As I mentioned in my first video, the, the numeral nouns that are metaphors of the water, they don't change, they are static. So that's why we're gonna look at them first before looking at the dominance of the nominal nouns. Now shifting to the nominal nouns, we start with bats, the howler monkey or the thread, is a masculine nouns. Now, E, the Pathfinder, is a Ishakil, a feminine owl. Now, Ah, the Transformation, is a feminine owl. Now, Ishvalam, the female jaguar, this one is another concept, is a Chohinel Ishakil, it's an aggressive feminine. What do I mean by aggressive feminine? It's a feminine owl, which is receptive, it is open, it's cold, but at the same time, it's dominant. So we can also put that as strong as a masculine owl. And then we have now Tikin, the ego, it's a masculine owl. And then we have Ahmak, the complementarity, it's a feminine owl. Then we go to now Naor, the now the thoughts, it's a masculine owl. Now Tihash, the cutting, the healing, it's a feminine owl. Now Kawuk, the sheet lightning, it's a feminine owl. Now Hunarpu, the conqueror son, is also a feminine owl. Then the second block of the owls, now Limosh, the water, is a feminine owl. Now Yek, the, the wind, is a masculine owl. Then we have now Al Akabal, the clarity. This one is Johinel Ishakil, which is in another aggressive feminine owl. Just like Ishvalam, the female jaguar, these are the only ones that enter into this classification as aggressive feminine. And then we have now Kat, the descending fire, the burning to ashes, the now net, it's a feminine owl. Khan, the stellar serpent, this one is a Chohinel, a Chahil, an aggressive masculine, it's a very powerful masculine owl. Then we have now Kame, the ancestors. It's a very soft feminine owl, maybe the most feminine of all of them. Then we have Nawal Kher, 
the deer, it's a masculine owl. And then now our canil, the seed, is a feminine owl. Now our toch, the ascending fire, is a masculine owl. And now our tzi, the dog, is a feminine owl. So now that we categorize all of the 33 owls, let's make some practical examples using the tresena. Let's use the Oshla Hukanil, the 13 C Tresena, as an example. The Tresena starts with Hunachmak, one complementarity. Now, one is masculine passive, and now Ahmak is feminine. So, none of them are dominant. But the next now we have Kebnaor, two thoughts. Two is feminine, and Naor is masculine. So, we have a dominant now. So two now who will be slightly more dominant than one Ahmak, maybe forcing the entrance a little bit earlier, but maybe not as much as I mentioned. We tend to see first the numeral nouns because remember the nominal nouns they oscillate. In the next case, we have washib tihash, three cut. Three is masculine and tihash is feminine. Now a sheep has more flow, it will be more direct. So three cuts and two thoughts, they will kind of be even, but three cut will be slightly more dominant because the numeral will be masculine, will be more dominant. And then we have kahib kawuk, four sheet lightning, double feminine. So in this case, you're gonna see three tihash living a little bit later because it has a dominant now over two that are double feminine. Then we have Hob Hunarpu, which is five conqueror son. Five is the most aggressive one, and Hunarpu is feminine. So you can see now five arriving earlier. And then the next now is going to be Wakib Mosh, six water, which are another double feminine. So the dominance of the now five itself will be enough to extend the stay of five Hunarpu that will live later after the sunset. Then we have Wukub Yik, seven wind, is double masculine. So you see also arriving a little bit earlier. But what happens into the next novel, Washakib Akabal, eight clarity. Eight is a masculine novel and Akabal is an aggressive feminine novel, which means they are also both dominant. And so they will be kind of even. So they basically you cancel each other. So you can see a transition around the sunset. But then we have Belair Kat, nine burning to ashes. Nine is feminine, Kat is feminine. So the eight Akabal, we're gonna be overpowering the nine Kat. Then we have Lau Khan, 10 is stellar serpent. Now 10 is a feminine owl, and now Khan is a masculine owl, an aggressive masculine owl. So Khan itself with the now 10 will also overpower. Then Hulauh Kame, 11 ancestors. Now Kame is feminine. So then in this case, now number 11 is gonna mirror the nominal now. So 11 is gonna be feminine. So double feminine. So again, now 10 Khan will have more dominance over these double feminine nowels. The next Nawo, Kablauh Ker, 12 deer another double masculine owls. We will also overpower 11 Kame. And then we have Oshlahu Kanil, 13 seed. 13 masculine, Kanil, feminine. So two masculine owls against one masculine and one feminine. You can see a little bit more of dominance of Kablau Ker over Oshlahu Kanil, the 13 seed. And that's how we understand you know, how the owls arrive in the Tresenas of the Maya calendar. So now that you understand how the conceptualizations work, you make it way easier for you to start following the Tresena and understand when the days are actually starting. But in the case of us human beings, to what we really determine 
what now is going to be the other is going to be the pregnancy conditions. But that's an extended subject and I'm gonna, not going to be entering into this. But I hope you understand how this dominance of the nows work and help you have a better experience in following the Maya calendar. So if you're enjoying this series, just leave your thumbs up. You know, it's the only thing that I ask for this effort that I'm putting here, adding to the videos. And also, if you're not subscribed and are interested to learn even more about the Maya calendar, consider subscribe and hitting the bell button so you can receive notifications every time I post a new video. So that's it. I hope you have enjoyed and I see you in my next one.